Hello everyone, so uh, it's Mr Milner again. Uh, I'm sure many of you have seen me probably in videos before. Um, I'm just here to introduce some videos that we've created, some subject tutorials uh, for a variety of subjects. These, this particular film uh, contains our core subjects, so English, Maths, Science and RPE. I hope you enjoy them. Bye bye. Hello Year 6s, and this is a big welcome to English at Hinchingbrook. We really wish that we could see you in person, but of course that's just not possible this year. So we've put together this presentation as an alternative, and this will tell you a little bit about our department, about the things that we'll be doing when you're here in September, and there is also a little task for you to do later on in the PowerPoint. Good luck with this, we look forward to seeing you in September. Take care. In the English department at Hinchinbrook, we all love teaching our subject and I think that's partly because it involves doing so many different things. It never really gets boring. If you look at the pictures on here, all the little images, you might be able to work out just some of the things that you'll do during your English lessons. Now, if you're coming from a small primary school, you might be surprised to find that the English department alone has 15 teachers in it. And that's because so many students in our school learn English. So we need lots and lots of teachers. Now, when you have your English lessons, each one will start with about 10 minutes of private reading. So that means that you're always going to need to have a library book or a book from home with you in your bag. And to help we, to help support you with this, you'll get some time in our big Hinching Book Library once every two weeks so that you can change and browse and just expand your interest in reading. Now on this screen you can see the curriculum for Year 7. That means that you can see all the different things that you'll be studying while you're here for the first 12 months. And we present English chronologically. So we start by going right back in time to the Greek myths. We read a collection of myths called the Odyssey. And we've deliberately chosen to start with something that we know you already know a little bit about from primary school. And then we move through time. So by the time we get to the end of year seven, you're reading uh, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley from the 1800s. And then you're looking at the stories of Sherlock Holmes in the Victorian era. And you can see as well that for each unit that you study, for each topic that you're reading about, there is a different type of assessment or a piece of work that you'll do. Some of those are based on reading and some of those are based on writing and one of them is a speaking and listening assessment. So something for everybody, we hope. Enough of the lesson. So what we'd like you to do is to think about what you personally would really like to get from your English teacher when you start a secondary school in September and to fill in the post-it on the right hand side that says my wish is that my new English teacher and then to complete that sentence before you move on. And now I'm just going to introduce you to a couple of very famous teachers from Roald Dahl's book uh, Matilda. I'd like you to think about whether or not these teachers get a thumbs up from you or a thumbs down. I wonder if you could just think for a minute about the names that Roald Dahl has given his two teacher characters here and what their names might suggest about what sort of people they're going to be like. I've got Miss Honey, I think about what that name suggests, and Miss Trunchbull. So what does that name suggest about what she might be like? Ah, fresh meat. Amanda Thrip. Yes, Miss Trunchbull. What are those? What's what, Miss Trunchbull? Hanging down by your ears. You mean like pigtails? Are you a pig, Amanda? No, Miss Trunchbull. Do I allow pigs in my school? My mommy thinks they're sweet. Your mommy is a twit. Those off before school tomorrow, or I will but come. But, but, did you say but? Carousel, but, yes. Okay, 
hit you, but... Matilda's teacher, Miss Honey, was one of those remarkable people who appreciates every single child for who she or he is. Let's skip these up for you, Miss Honey. Oh, how lovely. Thank you, Amanda. Okay, listen up, everybody. We have a new student with us today. This is Matilda Wormwood. I'd like you to sit over here with Lavender. Now, you all remember how scary your first days at school were, so I'd like you to be especially nice to Matilda and make her feel welcome, all right? Could you get her workbook for her, please? Yes, Miss Honey. You can sit down. Miss Honey was a wonderful teacher and a friend to everyone, but her life was not as simple and beautiful as it seemed. Miss Honey had a deep, dark secret. Though it caused her great pain, she did not let it interfere with her teaching. Well, Matilda, you've come on a very good day because we're going to review everything that we've learned so far. Now, it's all right if you don't understand any of this because you're brand new, but if you do know an answer, just raise your hand, okay? All right. We've been working on our two times tables. Would anyone like to demonstrate? <gasps> okay. Let's do some together. Two times four is? Eight. Two times six is? Twelve. Two times nine is? Eighteen. Excellent. You've been practicing. Pretty soon you'll be able to do any multiplication, whether it's two times seven? Fourteen. Very good. Or thirteen times three hundred and seventy-nine? Four thousand nine hundred and twenty-seven. Beg your pardon? I think that's the answer. Thirteen times three hundred and seventy-nine? 4927 It is. Wow. Matilda, you know how to multiply Now here is Roald Dahl's description of Miss Trunchbull from the, from the story of Matilda. Miss Trunchbull was a fierce, tyrannical monster who frightened the life out of pupils and teachers alike. When she came up close, you could almost feel the dangerous heat radiating from her as from a red-hot rod of metal. When she marched, Miss Trunchbull never walked. She always marched like a stormtrooper with long strides and arms swinging. When she marched along a corridor, you could actually hear her snorting as she went. And if a group of children happened to be in her path, she'd plough right on through them like a tank, with small people bouncing off to her left and right. She had once been a famous athlete, and even now the muscles were still clearly in evidence. You could see them in the bull neck, in the big shoulders, in the thick arms, in the sinewy wrists and in the powerful legs. Looking at her, you got the feeling that this was someone who could bend iron bars and tear telephone directories in half. Her face, I'm afraid, was neither a thing of beauty nor a joy forever. She had an obstinate chin, a cruel mouth, and small, arrogant eyes. 
and as for her clothes, they were, to say the least, extremely odd. She always had on a brown cotton smock, which was pinched in around the waist with a wide leather belt. This belt was fastened in front with an enormous silver buckle. The massive thighs, which emerged from out of the smock, were encased in a pair of extraordinary breeches, bottle green in colour and made of coarse twill. These breeches reached to just below the knees, and from there on down she sported green stockings with turn-up tops, which displayed her calf muscles to perfection. And now for Rolgal's description of Miss Honey. Miss Jennifer Honey was a mild and quiet person who never raised her voice and was seldom seen to smile, but there is no doubt she possessed that rare gift for being adored by every small child under her care. She seemed to understand totally the bewilderment and fear that so often overwhelm young children who for the first time in their lives are herded into a classroom and told to obey orders. Some curious warmth that was almost tangible shone out of Miss Honey's face when she spoke to a confused and homesick newcomer to the class. The whole of Miss Honey's pale and pleasant face blushed a brilliant scarlet. Then once again she smiled. It was a smile of pure pleasure. Why thank you, Matilda, she said, still smiling. Now on this slide we've given you some little tasks to do based on those two texts. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a printer, you could uh, print your two texts out and then you could use some highlighting or you could underline things with a pen. If not, you can work from the screen. So there are some fairly straightforward things to do here to pick out some bits of description and then to look for some techniques. So looking at a simile or metaphor that Roald Dahl has used to describe Miss Trunchbull and then looking at the different adjectives that uh, Roald Dahl has used to describe both of these teachers. Now, your last task here is to use the template that we've given you, and this is meant to be the outline of a teacher. Now, if you don't have, um, if you're not able to print this off, then you can just draw the outline on a piece of paper. And we would like you to use one side of the outline to create the perfect English teacher. So you might think about what you'd like them to look like, their clothes and their appearance, uh, some adjectives, some similes to describe what they'd be like, how they'd behave. And then I'd like you to turn it over and do the same thing, but this time for your nightmare English teacher. Who would you not like to be standing in front of you when you start your English lessons in September? So again, what are they going to look like? Can you think about adjectives to describe their looks and behaviour? Maybe a simile? So it's entirely up to your thoughts and imagination to fill in your template. Good luck! And here's just the beginning of what your templates might look like when you start filling them in. And then of course you can draw onto the template, you can draw face and clothing, as well as surrounding it with words and other techniques that you'd like to use to describe them. So I just want to finish now by saying a big thank you for the work that you've done um, on this lesson today. And I'd also like to say that we are so looking forward to meeting you in September and starting on an exciting new English lessons. Hope you have a lovely few weeks before then. Take care, see you in September. Hello everyone, my name is Mrs Williams and I work at Hinchingbrook School. Now, like a lot of people at the moment, I'm working from home. So I thought it'd be an ideal opportunity just to say a quick hello to you all before you start with us. You'll usually find me in the lower school working with year 10 and year 11 students in the classroom. When I'm not with the older students, I'm working with year 7 through to year 11 in my own room, working on a programme called Lexonics. It's looking at the meanings of words, where they came from and how those words link to other words within the English language. Maybe you've heard of it, you might even have done it at your primary school. When I'm not in the English department, you'll often find me in the middle school in the LRC, which is the Learning Resource Centre. Another word for that is the library. It's a very busy place, it's huge. We have over 40,000 items of books, fiction and non, DVDs, audiobooks, magazines, graphic novels. The list goes on. 
we have Mrs Molyneux, our main librarian, who will be there to assist you. The library is open every single day before school and after school and only closes for 20 minutes at lunch. As part of your English lesson, you will be taken to the library where you'll have the chance to select something, just in case you haven't found the library any other time during the week. We also have some of our older students, Year 11 and Year 12, working with Year 7 in something we call a Literacy in the Library, an ideal opportunity for the older students to work with the younger ones and they play games and share books. And it's a really nice time. Hinchingbrook is a really busy place. There's lots going on and I hope that when you get there, you too will find something to keep you busy as well. I'm sure you will. Anyway, take care and we'll see you all soon. Bye for now. Hello Year 7s and welcome to the Hinchinbrook Mathematics Department. We're very much looking forward to seeing you guys here in September and we thought we'd just take you on a little tour to show you a bit about how maths works. So this is the first part of the mathematics department. So we've got all of these classes here. You could be in any one of these while you are with us. One really important room I want to point out is this one just here. If you have a look at the door, it says the math space. If you have any problems, anytime you want to find one of your teachers at break time or lunchtime, this is where you'd come to find them, okay? So this is one of the first quadrants. I'm gonna take you down and show you one of the other ones in just a second. So, if you come down here, we've got more classrooms with a quiet garden room here, a bit of outside space there. Mrs. Grant's office, if you ever need to find Mrs. Grant, she's the head of maths, you can find her in there. I'm just going to take you in and show you what one of the classrooms looks like at the moment. So, as you can see, things are probably a little bit different to what you are used to in terms of primary school. Okay? The whole classroom has been set up to make sure that it is safe for you guys to arrive in September and we've currently got two metres spacing between all of our tables. Okay? So when you come in September, it may look like this. We might be up here, they might be back to normal, we just don't know yet, so we'll probably show you what it looks like at the moment. Alright? In terms of mathematics, I want to show you some of the equipment that you're going to need when you start here in September. It's really important that you've got all of this with you right from the very beginning. So we've got the obvious pen, pencil. We also use green pens for marking students' work, so make sure you've got one of those. A pair of compasses, a protractor, a nice ruler that's not broken, shattered, or missing bits out of it. And really important, a proper scientific calculator, okay? The old school, much smaller calculators won't work, okay? Neither will a scientific calculator that only has a single height display. So a proper scientific calculator, you can get from WH Smith's, Tesco's, or from the school uh, library. And you need to make sure you've got a proper full height display. I recommend the Casio brand, because that's what we have as teachers, and therefore your display and setup will perfectly match ours. Okay, so make sure you've got one of these before you come in September. Hello guys, welcome back. So we thought we'd just show you a little bit of the kind of things you're going to do when you come here in year seven. So we're going to start off with some algebra for some of you. You will have seen little bits of it at primary school, but lots of you is going to be something brand new and exciting we can show you and get you interested. We've got some geometry, we've got some number work, and we've got some probability and statistics. So we do cover quite a lot in year seven. When you arrive here in September, um, we don't do any setting until Christmas time. So we do the first term in mixed ability groups that we can get to know you, you can find your feet, get settled in, and then at Christmas we'll look at doing actual setting. Okay. We thought we'd show you one of the books that we use. So when you arrive here in September, you'll be given a blue book like this one. All right, and this is the type of work that we do in the lesson. We start most lessons off with a maths box starter, and then we'll be looking at uh, different topics throughout the course of the work. Here we're looking at some surds and some rationalising from the denominator. Some really interesting maths. You can see examples here of teachers marking in red and the students have done their corrections in green, which is really important why you need to bring that green pen in. Final thing I want to do is just go through and show you who is in the mathematics department and who you can expect to see in September. 
First of all, we've got Mrs. Grattan here. She's the head of maths. She's the one whose office I showed you earlier. If you've got any problems, she's a fantastic person to talk to. We've got Mr. Steed. Mr. Steed deals with all of the data in the mathematics department. So he looks at the reporting and all of the setting. We've got Mrs. Osborne. Mrs. Osborne is in charge of teaching and learning. That means that she helps us to deliver interesting and exciting lessons to you guys. On the left here, we've got uh, Mrs. Rossi. She's one of our teaching assistants. So she might be in some of your lessons, helping you out. And on the right, we've got Miss Lewis, who heads up Key Stage 5. Now, you won't be there for a little while yet, but I'm sure some of you will uh, finally make it to sixth form, and you'll see lots more of Miss Lewis there. On the left here we've got Miss Core. Miss Core is another one of our teaching assistants who helps out a lot of lessons and does some small group teaching as well, so you might see a lot of her. And we've got Miss Carr, one of our mathematics teachers. On the left we've got Mr. Commodore Mensa, and on the right here we have Mr. On the left we have Miss Parsley, and on the right we have Mrs. Quinn. On the left, we have Miss McKenzie, and on the right here, we have Mrs. Butler, who's doing all of the filming for me today. Thank you, Mrs. Butler. <laughs> You're welcome. Would Thank you like to introduce yourself as well? Ah, uh, yes, and I'm uh, Mr. Boyle. I'm also one of the teachers here, and I do all of the curriculum stuff. So when you saw the big tide table of what you're going to be learning, that's all the sort of information I put together for the Maths Department. On the left here, we've got Mr. Hopkins, and on the right here, we've got Mr. Wood. Brilliant. Well, thank you for coming on this little journey with us around the mathematics department. I hope it's given you an insight into what it's going to be like in September. If you've got any questions, please have a chat with Mr Milner with your form tutor or email us directly and we can try and help you out in any way that we can. Thank you very much guys. Look forward to seeing you all in September. Bye bye. Hello Year 6, it's Mrs Osborne here from Hinchinbrook School in the Maths Department. I would like to set you a challenge for your summer term and your summer holidays um, and it's the factors and multiples game. Um, you can find this on enrich.maths.org forward slash factors and multiples, this website here. Uh, they've set the game up here for two players but actually I would like you to play it for one player because then we can all play against each other. So you scroll down to the grid here, you can see you've got the numbers 1 to 100. These are the whole numbers from 1 to 100, we call them integers, integer means whole number. Your aim is to make a chain by clicking on the numbers, when you click on them, they move to this side, they disappear from here, you can't use them more than once, and you're going to link them together to make a chain of factors and multiples. Now I'm going to start with the number 6, and I'm going to try and find a factor of 6 to link it with. Now the factors of 6 are the numbers that multiply together to make 6. So you could say 1 times 6 is 6, so 1 and 6 are factors of 6. 2 times 3 also makes 6, so 2 and 3 are also factors of 6. If I want to list all the factors of 6, I could have 1, 2, 3 and 6. I'm going to pick 3. Now I know that I've done it right because I've now got two green numbers here that are linked together with these little arcs around them to say that they are in a chain. It says up here now that my longest chain is two numbers long. I could then try and find a factor of three. The only thing I would have left, one times three makes three. So I could just click on the number one. I could also try to find a multiple of three. Now the multiples of three are numbers in the three times table. So if I count up in threes far enough, I know I would reach the number 90. So 90 is a multiple of three, so now I've got a long chain of three numbers. They're all green, that means they're right. If I did something wrong, it would be blue. It would not fit in with the chain, and I'd have to pop it back. Okay, so now I'm looking either for a factor or a multiple of 90. The multiples of 90 are 90, 180, 270, None of those are left. 90 is used up, 180 is too big for my grid. So I'm going to have to think of a factor of 90. Now I could have 9. 9 times 10 makes 90. So 9 and 10 are factors of 90. 30 times 3 is 90. 30 is a factor of 90. And my aim here then is to either link a factor or a multiple every time of the last number on the chain to get as high a chain number as possible. I've seen people get do chains of about 50, 
50. A little while ago I had to go on this and I got a chain of 37. I would like you to send me the longest possible chain you can. Uh, you can either press your print screen button and take a photo of it on your screen or you can use your snipping tool if you've got that or you can take a photo on a phone of your screen and email that to me. Um, my email address is on the slide and I'd really like to see as many year sixes send me um, as possible. Now we just need to talk really quickly about the number one. Number one is really special. It can help you out at any point in your chain because number one is a factor of every integer. Anytime you get stuck, you get to a really difficult number and you don't know what to do, the number one will always help you out. It will always be a factor of whatever number came before. Um, one is super special because it is the only number that is not a prime number and it's also not a composite number. Every single other integer is a prime or a composite. So one is super special, so it can help you out when you get really stuck. I've set an additional challenge um, in the box next to this video. Uh, I've told you about prime numbers, composite numbers, factors, multiples. Um, you might then want to start looking at other types of number as well. Any new types of number that you discover that you hadn't heard of before, please include it in your email. We'll be really interested to see what you've found out. We're super excited about teaching you and we will see you in September. Hello, my name is Mrs Hodges and I teach chemistry here at Inchingbrook School. Hi Year 6, my name is Mrs Parks and I teach Biology at Hinchinbrook School. Hi, my name is Dr Cambridge and I teach Biology. Hi guys, my name is Mr Hall, uh, I'm a science teacher, I'm also the head of Wilton House and I run Model and Gaming Club, so you may see me in one of those roles. Hi, I'm Mr West, I'm a general science teacher, I teach all three subjects, Chemistry, Physics and Biology. Um, really looking forward to seeing you join us. Hi, I'm Miss Pamplin, I'm a science teacher at Hinchinbrook. My uh, favourite science is biology, in fact I'm the head of biology and we're looking forward to uh, seeing you all when you arrive. Hello, my name's Mr Pettit and I teach biology. Hello, I'm Miss Haynes, I teach science, mostly biology and I'm really looking forward to meeting you at Hinchinbrook. Uh, hi Year 6, uh, my name's uh, Miss Blick, um, I'll be one of your science teachers potentially and I mainly teach chemistry. Hi, my name is Mrs Shaw. I teach science, all three of them, but mainly chemistry. Hello, my name is Mr Jack and I am one of the physics teachers here at Hinchin Brook School. Hi, I'm Dr Bradley and I teach biology. Hello Year 6s, soon to be Year 7s. I hope you're all well. Uh, my name is Mrs Olson. I am the head of science uh, and a subject that I teach mostly is biology. Um, it's a real shame that you weren't able to get up to the science department uh, in the run up to uh, the end of the year uh, like we normally do for our transition but hopefully by seeing some of these videos uh, it will give you a little bit of a sense of what the science department is like and hopefully you'll get to meet some of the science teachers even if it's via video. Um, to give you a bit of an idea of what the science um, rooms look like, this is my room, so this is a biology room so I'll give you a little bit of a look around so you can see. Sorry, not very good. So if we have a look around there, you can see we've got the gas taps ready for you to do some Bunsen burner work and some chemistry. Um, and there we are. Back to me. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you all in September. Bye.
Hi there to all of the year sixes who are going to be joining us in year seven at Hinchinbrook. The Hinchinbrook Science Department are really looking forward to welcoming you to our block and I thought I'd just give you a very quick look at a lab just so you can get a sense of the kind of room that you're going to be working in when you do your science lessons. Now of course because of the current situation our labs do look a bit different We've got some chairs stacked at the back there, and there's obviously a lot of space in between tables, but I can still show you some of the normal things that we have and things that we work with. So usually at the front of a lab, there's a teacher space. So here's my teacher space here. That's where the teacher will work from. And also usually there's a little demonstration table that we can use to show you how to run experiments or how to do certain work if that's what you're gonna do. Then you guys, sit at benches on lab stools like this one and you will be very close to a set of plugs and a set of gas taps and in your first couple of weeks you'll learn how to use the gas taps you'll learn how to use things called bunsen burners and you'll learn how to use your desks appropriately for doing experiments and um, there will be a whiteboard in the classroom and usually somewhere for the teacher to write and also somewhere for them to present things and show you science videos and things like that. There's plenty of space in a science lab. There are some specific rules when you're in science, like if you're doing experiment work, you have to make sure you're stood up. Uh, you have to always make sure that your bags are underneath your tables, but they're rules that we'll explain to you when we arrive and they're all quite straightforward. It's just very, very important that you behave appropriately in a science lab so that we can get the best work done and trust you with some of our brilliant experiments. So that is a bit of a glance at a science lab. You'll get used to working in this environment very, very quickly. And like I said, we cannot wait to welcome you to our science block at Hinchinbrook. See you soon. Here's a lab all set up, ready to go outside and do some field work. Let's zoom through. So. We're all nicely spaced. Let's see what else. And then going through here. Oh, another teaching classroom already set up. Here we go. Oh, hand sanitizer. Staying safe. Be blunt and warm. Go this way. Go this way. Okay, we're off. Following the arrows on the floor. Out we go, more classrooms as we go by. Two blocks of science, but they are joined up. Here we go, and another classroom. It's the prep room, or at least part of it. And all full of all the different things Look inside everyone. Different experiments that you're going to do over the next few years. Loads and loads and loads. Hi, Year Six. Hope you're all well. My name is Miss Newman and I am Head of Religion, Philosophy and Ethics, or RPE, here at Hinchin Book School. At primary school, you might know my subject better as RE. The reason that I love RE so much is because for me, it is all about the study of people and I find people really fascinating. So I like to be able to ask questions such as, why do you believe what you do? What beliefs have influenced your actions on a particular topic? And getting to see how people's cultures affect the way that they believe all over the world. And we will be able to do some of that with you when you study our subject with us um, at Hinch and Brook. Our subject is one that you will um, study throughout your entire time here at Hinch and Brook School as you will take a compulsory GCSE in our subject. So we will be able to explore a huge range of topics and issues over that time. 
In year seven, one of my favorite units that we teach is our first unit, because we look at our local area of Cambridgeshire and beyond. We look at what religions do we have in our local area? What religious people are there? What religious buildings do we have in our local area? How have they contributed to the local area? And what are they like? So really excited for you to get to have a little look at that because I'm sure you will see some places that are familiar to you. The other unit that I really love and um, that we teach in year seven is our Old Testament role model scheme of work. And basically what you do there is we look at some stories um, in the Old Testament, in the Bible, um, some great stories of really heroic people um, that you may have heard of. So people like Abraham, Job, Esther, Ruth. How are these people still role models for us today? What can we learn from them? Even though um, they, their stories are over 2000 and even more um, years old. So I'm um, really excited to welcome you to Hinchin Book School and for us to hopefully um, see you and start with you in September. Hello, I'm Mr Chester from the RPE department at Hinchinbrook School. I enjoy teaching RPE because I think it's a really fantastic opportunity to think about new and unfamiliar ideas and concepts. I think to examine the lives and the beliefs and the values of other people, some of them have got very different lives and values to ourselves, is a really brilliant way of learning more about our own beliefs and lives and values. And I think that's an important part of maturing and developing. My favorite part of the RPE syllabus is probably our work on Buddhism. Buddhism doesn't ask you to believe in a God. And I know that for some people, belief in God is a problem, but Buddhism doesn't ask you to do this. Instead, it simply says that if you act with wisdom, in other words, make the right choices and act with compassion, which means being kind towards other people, then we can make the world a better place and increase happiness for ourselves and for the people around us. I'm sure you'd agree with me that we need a bit more of that in the world in 2020. So that's my favourite bit. I look forward to meeting you in September and perhaps having some good discussions about these things in the future. Hi Year 6 or soon to be Year 7. My name is Miss Wells and I teach RPE here at Hinchingbrook. Um, I studied philosophy and ethics at university and my special interest is in whether or not robots and computers can ever think just like we do. Um, one of my favourite things is superhero movies and I like to think about whether or not um, they're really good people like we think they are. Um, and I'm also new to the school, just like you. So I started in January, so I'm still quite new. My favourite thing about RPE, personally, is that it is a fantastic way, not just about learning about religion, but it's also a great way to learn about other people and to be able to see the world through other people's eyes. I think that's really important because there's so many different kinds of people in the world and we're going to go and meet them one day. You're going to leave school and you're going to meet lots of different people. So it's really good to understand how different people think. And my favourite part about the course here that we do at Hinchingbrook is the philosophy unit. So um, philosophy basically means love of wisdom. And what it is, is looking at the world and people and working out what we can really know. So some of the big questions that we look at are is our world real? Maybe we're in a computer simulation. Something else we look at is, can robots ever think? Um, is God real or did we just make him up? And my personal favorite uh, lesson in the whole unit is, are we really free to choose in life or do we just think that we choose? Are we really like little robots going about our day, thinking we're choosing things, but actually we're programmed? So I am super excited to meet you all and to teach you all RPE. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of fun and we're going to learn loads together. Um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to meeting you. So hopefully see you all soon. Take care, everyone. Hi, Year 6. My name is Miss Palmer and I teach RPE at Hinchingbrook. I enjoy teaching RPE because I am fascinated by what other people believe and why they believe it. One of the units that I've helped develop in Year 7 and you will be studying is about Buddhism. We look at the religion's beginnings in India and then we look at worship, 
teachings, and we look at the range of Buddhists in the UK today. I also teach PSHE, and that I work with Mr Milner on the lessons that you will be taking next year. Have a great summer, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye. Hi everybody, I'm Miss Clements and I teach Religion, Philosophy and Ethics at Hinchinbrook. Like you, I'm new to the school in September, but I'm so excited to meet you all to help you settle in and to have really interesting discussions about religion and the world whilst in my classroom. For now though, have a lovely summer, remember to stay safe and I'm so excited to see you very soon. Hi Year 6, Miss Newman again here. What I thought I would do is just give you a little bit of a tour of the RPE corridor and classrooms so you know what to expect um, in September when you come to us for the first time. So welcome to the RPE corridor. So we are situated right near the library, the LRC. And then in the other direction, you have got um, some maths classrooms. So this here is our RPE corridor. So I'll just give you a little bit of a tour. So this first classroom obviously is looking very different at the moment with all of the measures that we've got in place to keep people safe um, throughout this coronavirus pandemic. Um, but this classroom is belonging to Miss Wells. So if you have Miss Wells for your teacher, this will probably be the classroom that you will be in for your lessons. And then as we move down the corridor, we have Mr. Chester's classroom. So if you have Mr. Chester for RPE, this will be your classroom. And then this room down here, although you won't access it this way, I'm just showing you very quickly, is our RE staff base. And you will access it from this door, opposite the HSSP office. Excuse the mess, tidiness may not be our strong point. So back through Mr Chester's classroom and then we'll walk just a little bit further up the corridor again and then this one is my classroom so if you have me for RPE this will be where your lesson takes place. You might notice my lovely display board over there is where I did my little introduction video for you earlier. And then for our last classroom, we've got some displays as we go along as well. This classroom is shared by two of our teachers, Miss Palmer um, and Miss Harris Clements. So if you have either of those for RPE, you will more than likely be in this room. So just thought I'd give you a little bit of a tour of where you will be able to find us. So maths down that way, LRC down the bottom, and this is our RPE corridor. So the last thing that I'd like to do today, Year 6, is set you a small task to have a little go at at home that we can discuss and explore with you in our first few lessons in RPE at Hinch and Book when you start. So, what I would love you to do is to choose any country in the world and explore the religion of that country. So, for example, last summer I went on holiday to Cambodia and the main religion in Cambodia is Buddhism. So, what I would want you to do is to find some pictures of what Buddhism looks like in Cambodia, for example. Tell me what it is that Buddhists do and what their main beliefs are and particularly kind of what Buddhism looks like in Cambodia. So for example, I might talk about Angkor Wat, which is a huge religious site. In fact, it is the biggest in the world 
and it used to be a Hindu temple, but it is now a Buddhist one. So I might talk about that in my small piece of work um, about Buddhism in Cambodia. And then I would like you to contrast that with what Buddhism looks like in our country. So in our country, we have a small amount of Buddhists, only 0.2% of the UK population. And our nearest um, Buddhist temple or Buddhist centre is in Cambridge. So I might just write a small amount about what Buddhism is like in the UK, as well as my nearest place of worship for that religion. So you can pick any country that you wish um, and focus on any religion within that country that you want to do. And then just contrast it with what the religion is like in this country, how many people follow it, what local places of worship are there for that religion and so on. If you have any kind of other additional facts that you find out about it, that would be really impressive um, and would be fantastic for you to share um, when you start with us in September. If you have got any questions at all about that, you can email me on cn at hinchbk.cams, C-A-M-B-S dot S-C-H dot U-K. I hope you have fun with that. Um, and as we have said um, already quite a few times, I'm sure today, we are so excited to welcome you to Hinch and Book. Um, we love teaching our year seven um, curriculum. Um, and I'm sure that you are going to enjoy it and find it interesting too. See you all for now. Bye.